Grace and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mi Rang Baek. I'm lead pastor here at Kinto Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you worshiping with us on, on YouTube and Facebook today. Loving friends, please join our online family, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Instagram. Also, subscribe our YouTube channel. And uh, please give your tithes and offerings through our website, www.gintoparkumc.org slash giving. Every contribution makes difference. Loving friends, today, still we can say Happy Easter, because Easter is not just one day, but a season, Easter tide. It is the great 50 days ending on Pentecost Sunday. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, so let us center and prepare ourselves for a risen Lord. Please join me for the call to worship. What great joy we have. Our Lord is risen. 
believe with your whole heart in the miracle of resurrection. We open our hearts to the good news of God's faithfulness to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Savior. We stood in awe of a Redeemer who has defeated sin, conquered death, and changed our eternity. Now, the work of the church begins. It's our time to go and tell the world about Jesus, to let them know they're loved, to show them they're cared for, to be the light of Christ to those around us. The story of Easter is not meant to be kept quiet. This gift is not meant to be kept secret. The love of Jesus, His grace and mercy, the power of His resurrection are meant to be shared with our friends, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. Today, there is light overcoming darkness, hope destroying hopelessness, victory rising out of defeat, and life rising from the ashes. It's time to climb the mountaintops and proclaim in one loud voice, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, I'm glad to share the words of invitation with all of you to God's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from John chapter 20, verse 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. But he said to them, so on the other side the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark on the nails on his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hands on his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again at the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Then he said to Thomas, Reach out with your hands and put them on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those, Jesus said, who have not seen and yet who have come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe in Jesus and that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that though believing, you may have life for eternity. This is the word of God. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved congregation, long time ago, there was a cricket, I mean, there, there was a circuit riding preacher. He trained his horse to go when he said, praise the Lord, and to stop when he said, amen. The preacher mounted uh, the horse, said, praise the Lord, and went for a ride in the nearby mountain. When he wanted to stop for lunch by a mountain stream, he said, amen. He took off again saying, praise the Lord. At the moment, the horse started heading toward the edge of the cliff on a narrow mountain trail. The preacher got excited and said, woo. -hoo. However, the horse did not stop. Then he remembered and said, Amen. The horse stopped just short of the edge. The preacher was so relieved that he took, he looked up the heaven and said, Praise the Lord. Yeah, he took surprise. He took surprise unexpectedly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe that the reason Christ is among us here and now in your life, in our church, in our community, and in this world. Amen. We are in the season of Easter, Easter tide. Easter is not one time of hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. Um, it is the time of surprise and surprise as well. Easter is a time of hallelujah and surprise. God raises Jesus from the dead. The reason Jesus appeared to his disciples, he made people surprised, astonished. It proved God's presence and power with them always. People became confident and joyful for God, the Emmanuel. Today, we read two stories of the resurrection of Jesus in the Gospel of John. The first story, I think that you may articulate the main feeling emotions in the disciples of Jesus before they met the risen Lord. They were feeling fear. They were feeling anxiety of death because they had seen all the things that Jews and Romans tortured and killed Jesus by the name of religion and laws. The Gospel of John very clearly says that the doors of the house where the disciples had met, had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Fear and anxiety of death dropped the disciples into darkness. However, the risen Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. As the, fa as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Peace be with you. I hope that you may pay more attention to the latter part of the passage. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The risen Jesus there was not only providing emotional support to his disciples that bandage band-aid band in in a room by fear of jews but also calling them again into a new life sending them again with courage and hope and joy out to the world so in other words jesus was resurrecting his disciples from the state state of death Yes, they became unlocked from fear and anxiety. They became revitalized by the Spirit of Jesus. According to another story of the resurrection of Jesus in the Gospel of John, Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. What does this mean to all of us? Jesus asks Easter people to have to stand radically on Jesus' scars, which is his cross. Jesus would want Thomas and all Easter people to put our hands, our fingers, 
his body, which has beaten, tortured, torn out, and nailed, and pierced. He would not want Easter people to only focus on his mystery, glorious body. He reminds all of us of where we begin our faith journey and from where we build up again our faith community. It is the cross of Jesus. Also, I assume that Jesus in John's gospel tells about the power of empathy which must prevail among us Easter people in our church. The gospel of John addresses that Thomas calls the reason Jesus, my Lord and my God, as soon as he has heard what Jesus asks. We are familiar with Peter's confession. Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God son of the living God. However, John's gospel today, let us have a very powerful confession of Jesus from Thomas's mouth. It is caused from a person to person relationship. He confesses Jesus, my Lord, my God. It is not given from doctrinal knowledge or learning or understanding. It must be given from his personal relationship with Jesus. As a pastor of this church, I hope and pray that each one of us, each one of you may have your affirmation of faith to Jesus like Thomas, my Lord and my God. I assume that Thomas' confession could not be separated from his wondered experiences. According to the Gospel of John, when other disciples told him that they had seen the risen Lord, Thomas replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by um, the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Many people in churches have labeled Thomas doubting. However, Thomas lost Jesus who was his loved one and his master. He saw how Jesus was killed by Jews and Romans. They, there were no religious, political, legal justice at all. I assume that Thomas was deeply wounded emotionally and spiritually and mentally. The death of Jesus became his trauma, traumatic memory. Thomas should, should be cared and healed at that time. He might need a pastoral caregiver. The risen Lord, the risen Jesus appeared to Thomas. He showed him his severely wounded body. However, his life was never over. God raised him again, raised him up again. Jesus did not blame or judge Thomas who did not believe by but saying to Thomas, Thomas, you are wounded because of me. I am here with you. For Thomas, resurrection meant to re-encounter re Jesus Christ. It also meant to care for and heal his traumatic um, memory of the death of his loved one, Jesus. I believe that Thomas began to see his wounds through the scars of Jesus. If he stayed his traumatic um, memory continually, he would be a very destructive or harmful door. However, the church history witnesses that he brought the goodness, to, of, goodness of Jesus to India. He lived out his confession of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Siblings in Christ, I think that we all might be like all disciples, including Thomas, in the story of the resurrection of Jesus. Fear and anxiety of death are not far from us. We also may have a fear of failure, fear of one's future life, fear of conflict, fear of death. Especially our denomination nowadays have a fear as well. What, what, what can we do that in this long time conflict? But we have hope and we are praying for that. We also have been grieving for unexpected passing of our loved ones personally. 
We have been grieving in loss of physical body and capacity as we are getting old. We have been grieving for economic loss, light or severe traumatic uh, memories have been there always in our lives. Especially Thomas replying, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, means his deep desire to touch Jesus' real body once again by his hands. What we should remember is that the resurrection of Jesus is not far from releasing or resurrecting oneself and all other people from fear, anxiety, failure, conflict, life threat, and loss, maybe grief as well. My siblings in Christ gathered here online and in person on the second Sunday of Easter. I believe that God who raised Jesus from death and Christ Jesus who unlocked his disciples from fear and anxiety can do the same thing to each one of you and all of us. Jesus mentioned, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Therefore, I think that for the disciples, the resurrection of Jesus means re-awareness of God, the Emmanuel, God with us. It also means that means to begin newly toward becoming new beings in Jesus. This resurrection of Jesus still available to all of us here and now. Therefore, take into your heart the confession of Jesus from Thomas, my Lord and my God. By the text of Act, the disciples of Jesus begin truly new life. They have been making a difference day by day in the name of Jesus. They have taught the good news of Jesus to the others in Jerusalem. For these disciples, the name of Jesus is not a shameful name anymore. It is not the name of the uh, cor curse or death. It is the name of the power and presence of God, re recreating and sustaining all of them. It is the name to let all people stand, one, stand on the way of truth and the life of Jesus Christ. However, the high priest calls disciples and demands not to teach anything in the name of Jesus. Why did, they, why did he demand it? He knows very well who killed Jesus. For the high priest and all those who crucified Jesus the name of Jesus is the most dangerous name, which never must be articulated in the public place. They believe that the name of Jesus would have to be erased and forgotten among people's memories eternally. But according to their logic, the disciples of Jesus would have to stay in fear and trauma forever and ever. However, God broke all the things. God rose Jesus up from the dead. Jesus stood among his disciples with, uh, disciples with fear or of the power of those who killed Jesus. He unlocked their hearts and minds from fear and breathed on them the breath of new life. Loving friends, to resurrect Jesus into us is to be aware of God's righteousness, which is never ab ab abandoned. It is to discover self through it. It is to stand on the side of God, which is compassionate to all humans. It is to speak out and live out God's care and love. Loving friends, the reason Jesus says to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. He reminds them of what he asks us, what he asks as he washed their feet. He asked them to love one another. Jesus is, in the Gospel of John, says to his disciples, if you forgive anyone, anyone's sin, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Jesus asked his disciples 
uh, and you all, Easter people, to be proactive to love one another and to love all those who hate you and persecute you because of his name. I think that, um, I think what Jesus recalls, uh, what Jesus calls us to love and forgiveness means to uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, to all those who are living in a world where violence is getting common. And um, so, loving siblings in Christ, Jesus teaches that we must love people who do not love us as well. It cannot be achieved by human hands alone. We all know. However, God may let us make it completely by God's grace, by the power of the love that Jesus showed us. When we humans are filled with the Spirit of God, we could stay in the love of God. Therefore, be persistent to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the peace of Christ. And it can change the world. It can change you. It can change our community. It can change our church and the world. It can change everything, this world. It can change people's lives as well. And it can change our very selves. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flow, flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, 
by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to our to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance inheritance that is imperishable, undefi undefiled, and unfading. Was we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he proclaimed and promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which, in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to his uh, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke this bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the, in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. Loving friends, Christ's table is ready. Please take the bread, the body of Christ, the grape juice or wine, the blood of Christ. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Speak to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the sustainer rest upon you and live through you this day and always. 
So now go in peace with the risen Lord.